Spiritual Teaching 255 Love Each Other 1. You have entered a time of struggle, prayer, and merit. You feel that the time of complacency is over and that you have to hasten your steps because humanity is awakening and you have the responsibility to give it the good news and the testimony of my coming, with words and deeds. 2. See how in all religions and sects, men scrutinize time, life and events, hoping to discover the signs that announce my arrival. They are the innocents who do not know that I have been manifesting for a long time and that this form of communication is about to end. But I also tell you that many of those who with such anxiety wait for me, if they witnessed the way I have come to communicate they would not recognize me, rather they would deny me. 3. Only the testimonies will reach them and through them they will believe that I was among my children. 4. You also intimately awaited me with impatience, but I knew that you would recognize me and would be one of my workers at this time. 5. The world may laugh at the way I have come to communicate, but it will not laugh at me, but at themselves because they do not even sense or understand what each creature means to my divinity. 6. For me it is the fairest thing I can do with my children, to communicate with them through the powers with which I have donated, without pretending that they are sinners and that they are impure. What fairer incentive for the son to know his father, hear it, look at it and feel it in order to love it. 7. It is said in an ancient prophecy that every sinful and non-sinful I should contemplate. Now, in this time I have told you, I have not come in search of the just to communicate through him, but from the sinner himself, who in the trials of life and in an instant of repentance was purified, because he is the son who, knowing that he is loved and worthy of the Father, fully penetrates the path of regeneration and virtue. Eight of the spokesmen for whom I have spoken to you, who sensed the gift he already possessed and the service to which he was destined, before you hear my word? None. They were prepared throughout their lives as in a crucible, but their work remained kept secret until the moment to reveal it to him had arrived. Nine. This is the principle or preparation for the spirit of man to know a higher communication with the Father, and you have been surprised. If you knew all that I have in store to reveal to you in due time, you would not understand why I love you so much, nor the merits that you will have to do to achieve such grace. 10. In 1866 the first congregation of spiritualists, disciples of this work, was born. Under the light of my spirit and oriented through Elijah, those first toddlers began to receive the flashes of the message that now, at its end, you are receiving in fullness. 11. From then until the present, many congregations have formed like branches that sprouted from that trunk founded by Roque Rojas. 12. Only one light has shone on the crowds that make up this people and yet how many differences exist between one group and another. Many years you have enjoyed the manifestation of my word through a simple, clear and understandable and very few have succeeded in defining the essence of the spiritualist doctrine. 13. There is just one year to go before my communication in this way ceases and most of the people are still very far from the truth. I have forgiven from the first to the last the fact of having materialized a divine revelation that was very distant from being able to understand in the first instant. But, when the spiritual lesson has been extended for many years and my word has been clarifying part by part this work, I see the time has come to order you that you get out of your routine, that you penetrate a little deeper into my teachings and that you take a definitive and firm step in the path of spirituality. 14. How do you want to continue seeking and worshipping me through symbols and forms, external worship and materials? You say, it is the heritage of the former and we respect it. Well people, now I tell you that those first only they were your forerunners, so that that form of worship and that form of spiritual communication that they initiated, you take it to perfection. 15. Do not confuse the divine law with the religions or forms that you have to interpret that law. 16. The law is eternal and immutable. Religions, cults and practices evolve and transform according to moral and spiritual development of those who profess them. If that spiritual evolution did not exist, you would still be worshipping God in the stars and in the elements like primitive peoples. 17. Do not stop in your way of loving me, serving me and worshipping me always go further, always improving, seek your improvement. On the other hand, 
Do not touch the law, do not alter it or change it. She always teaches you what is higher. She will always command you to fulfill with perfection. Will be present and eternal as universal law, teaching you the true love for God and true love for one another. 18. Do not be conservative of habits, forms or traditions, because you will remain for centuries mired in the lethargy of the bigotry and ignorance. Instead, be conservatives of the law and the truth. 19. Do not go at this time to imitate the Jewish people of the Second Era, who because they are traditionalist, conservative and fanatic, he could not eat the bread of the Kingdom of Heaven that the Messiah brought him and whom he was waiting for centuries and centuries, and when the time came, he could not recognize him because his materiality did not let him see the light of truth. 20. On this day I leave you only two words for you to analyze in depth and get out of them all the content that you are capable through good preparation spiritualism and spirituality. Only thus, meditating, praying and watching, you will be able to understand what the true and just worship should be, which you have to profess to me by means of this doctrine. 21. Yes, people, to love me through exterior worship, look for me in images and symbols and adore me through liturgies, ceremonial and feasts. There are many religions and many sects in which you can satisfy your heart if you still have hunger or need for such practices. But if you want to serve and love me through this spiritual work and for it renounce the other way of worshipping me, understand what spiritualism means and what spirituality represents so that if you really want to be disciples. In this doctrine, do not be the ones who impose customs, norms, traditions and external worship, because you will fall back into materialism, idolatry and fanaticism, and of spiritualism you will only know the name. 22. Rise as far as you can, seeking to adapt and adjust to my teaching, but do not do the opposite or adapt my doctrine to your little things and conveniences, materializing it, deforming it or altering it. 23. May this lesson today serve as a voice of alert for those who have heard it, so that, inspired by it, they dress of energy, of zeal, of love and faith, to break the networks that have imprisoned them for a long time. The true conception of what spiritualism means and the noble ideal of becoming true is born in your heart disciple of this doctrine of light and perfection. 24. Beloved people, when your differences have disappeared, when the disunity that now reigns among you has left its place to fraternity, and when you have understood your mission, the desire and from your heart the impulse to rise up to sow the seed of spirituality that you received in my word. 25. The moment of illumination will come for you, in which you will understand with great clarity the greatness of this work, amazed to find in its background wonderful revelations that you never imagined. Then you will rise spontaneously and you will spread throughout the earth, sowing your path with charity, light and consolation. No longer they will harm the judgments of your fellow men, nor will they make you suffer the scorn of your relatives because all the pains of the earth will seem small to you given the magnitude of your mission. 26. Blessed are those who reach that degree of spirituality, which makes them immune to pain, because they will be protected by the mantle of my mercy. 27. Faith, love and spirituality are the three virtues that will make the soldiers and apostles of the third era. Those virtues were present in all those servants, who from the earliest times testified my existence, my presence, my law and my truth. 28. Among these servants you can find the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles and the martyrs. But they have not been the only ones in the history of mankind. There have been many more, who in different ways have gone to play their mission and to testify my truth, resisting all kinds of attacks, ridicule, persecution and slander. Plus his faith, his indulgence for those who have hurt them, their constant and faithful love towards their brothers, love inspired by their Lord, has made to conquer pain, injustice and death. How could you explain the resignation of the martyrs before their executioners? How can you conceive of patience and serenity in the face of the persecutions of all those who have loved and followed me? 29. When you love me like this, you can no longer fear anything in the world. As long as your faith is not full or firm in your love, the fight will weaken you. 30. What are you afraid of? What do they imprison you for? Have your life taken from you. 
You know well that those times have passed and that there were many martyrs who offered their lives to prove to the enemies of the truth that martyrdom, prison and scaffold, instead of quenching the faith of my servants, I fanned the fire of their love, causing my servants to spread my teachings with greater force. 31. You fear the judgment of your kindred and you fear losing your peace in the world. Why don't you better fear the judgment of your God or to lose the peace of the Spirit for not having fulfilled your mission? 32. Today it seems to you a lot what I ask of you in exchange for the promised land. But in truth I tell you, that when you are in it, you will marvel to find yourselves there, until you feel unworthy and say, how little was what we did to deserve so much grace. 33. In your heart you are asking me, Master, are you going to give us more than we deserve? I answer, that if I gave you according to your works, you would have little or nothing. Do you think that this life you have, that body that you possess, those gifts that throb in your being and everything that surrounds you in your existence, be a prize right to your merits? 34. Truly I tell you, I have always given you and will give you more than justice you deserve, because I love you, because I am your Father. 35. You cry, people, recognizing your lack of faith and love, then you ask me what you must do to please me and achieve merits before me. To which I answer, that you serve your kind with the best will, that you feel the pain of those who suffer, that you develop your gifts and perfect them for the good of the needy, because what you do with your brothers, it depends on what you receive when you arrive in spirit. 36. What can you give me that I don't have? I have power, I have peace, I have light, I am the possessor of the universe, I am loved and served, there is not the slightest shadow of selfishness in my spirit, because I am perfection. Instead, among your brothers, who are children of my spirit, how much misery exists, how much pain and darkness, how much need. Why don't you love me in them? Why don't you give me everything of love in you, loving one another? 37. People, this is my answer to your question and it is my heavenly advice in the face of your indecision. 38. Beloved children, whom I receive on behalf of humanity. The end of my communication through human understanding, then your spirit will have to strive to have communion from spirit to spirit with my divinity. 39. Today my word is your bulwark, your incentive. But also after this time of my communication, you can feel my presence and my breath if you really know how to prepare. 40. The times when you needed a spiritual guide in the world have passed. From now on, everyone who enters this path will have no other path than that of my law, nor more guidance than its own consciousness. Without this, there will be no men and women of great light and great strength, who help the crowds by their example and inspiration. 41. If it were otherwise, Spirits like Moses or Elijah would have already sent to earth to trace the path and remind you at every step of the law. They help you, watch over you and accompany you, but no longer through a human, but from the spiritual. Who sees them? Nobody. But if you prepare yourself, you will feel the presence of the great spirits who have always had a relationship with humanity and great missions to fulfill. 42. Seek them in your prayers and if you really trust them, I tell you that you will never get lost because they will lead you with that love and zeal that gave you so many tests in the world. 43. I tell you again that you will not lack in the world men endowed with great light, who illuminate your path and sow love in your life. Humanity has always had the presence of these men on earth and there are times when the great legions of spirits of great light come to the world, who will come to destroy the false world that you have created, to raise a new one where peace is breathed and truth reigns. 44. They are going to suffer much because of the wickedness of men. But it will not be anything new, since none of the envoys of God has escaped persecution, mockery and offense. They will have to come into the world and dwell in it, because their presence is necessary on earth. 45. They will come calling with love to the heart of humanity. His word, impregnated with the Father's justice, will touch the pride and arrogance of all those who have exchanged the humble garment of their spirit for the attire of vanity, pride, false power and false greatness. 46. These will be the first to rise up, pointing with their index trembling with anger at my envoys. 
but that will serve so that in each test to which my servants are subjected, they can give great testimonies of the truth that I have brought the world. 47. You do not know now in which paths of human life they will have to emerge, but I tell you that some will appear in the womb of the great religions, those will fight for the unification and spiritual harmony of all men. Others will rise among men of science to show with the fruit of their inspirations that the true purpose of science is for man's spiritual improvement and not his misery and destruction. And so on every path my servants will appear bearing my law in his heart and testifying with words and deeds what I have come to speak to you at this time. 48. I also tell you that my seed, which is this doctrine that you have received, will bear its fruits in you and that those fruits will be the great spirits that come to incarnate in your children or in the children of your children. 49. They are already my last lessons and I am still talking about new teachings. It is that I come to fulfill my mission of Master until the last moment, shedding light on each word so that you do not remain in the dark in the times of bitterness and pain, when my divine justice makes itself felt like never before. 50. Watch and pray for the world, beloved people. 51. Come to me, I am the consolation and peace. 52. You have encountered bitterness and vicissitudes on earth for not having developed the spirit in its faculties and its gifts to overcome human miseries. 53. This world could be paradise instead of a valley of tears, if men will carry goodwill. I planted blessings in this home, I did not water thistles in the roads. The pain of men comes from their faults, but, just as they created pain, they must take charge of destroying it. 54. You who hear me are not a lost or wandering people. You are like a family that has built its home under the shadow of a stout tree, whose branches constantly offer you their fruits. 55. Under this shadow you regain strength and heal wounds, because it will be necessary to start the journey again, to climb the ride to the top. 56. Now your spirit reaches to rise to the sixth step of the scale where you find the light that dissipates all confusion, and that he presents his help to reach the seventh step. 57. I will destroy the confusion and misinterpretations that exist among you about the seven seals. Really I say, it is not that you belong to a certain seal, but that you must travel your spirit from the first to the last, he lives now in the sixth seal or sixth stage of his spiritual evolution. 58. How great have been the lessons and trials that the spirit has had to win to pass from one seal to another. How many merits has he had to make, and missing even the culmination, the seventh. 59. The force of evil with its temptations will insistently intervene in your step, but you will remember your master defeating the world, pain and the flesh, so that by imitating him you will come out victorious from the test. Search your consciousness for the sword to fight. There you will always find the infallible weapon ready. 60. How can a spirit be irretrievably lost for me, if it carries within itself a flash of my light that is never extinguished and wherever I go is in front of me? No matter how long your reluctance or how long your embarrassment may be, these will never be darkness longer than my eternity. 61. I have come to set you free again or, don't you feel your spirit freer after having destroyed your past fanaticism and its prejudices? 62. I am life and I have come to pour it out equally on everyone. Even if you've always looked for a town or a portion of men to manifest myself in them, has been to turn them into emissaries, prophets or witnesses of my divinity by service of humanity but not because it distinguishes them with a greater love or complacency than others. 63. Strengthen yourselves in my word, my children, so that you may come to look with true charity on your brothers and not be judges of the sinner, the vicious, the fanatic, the great, because you will hear in your conscience my voice that tells you, He that is clean, may he cast the first stone. My peace be with you.